how the resilient Jenkins played all of us. I think it's important for all types of families who are rich, poor, middle class, whatever, to share their stories and to make content and to create community. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And there's just certain things that I think the internet is just not meant to see. And if you can't handle people criticizing that, then maybe you shouldn't be overly exposing that. But then again, thank God some people are stupid enough to overshare because if they never did in the first place, many of us would have no idea what's truly going on behind closed doors especially in the world of family influencers, TikTokers, channels, and more, who kind of brand themselves as being not only wholesome, but also helpless, and they need your help to keep their family going. And again, this isn't really wrong. A lot of people are struggling nowadays and turning to social media can change a lot of families' lives. However, I feel like nowadays there is definitely this trend of learned helplessness, especially in our current generation. People who I'm gonna finish that thought, but let's let's stop right here. Learn helplessness. So we'll talk about what it says down here. Avoiding decisions, giving up quickly, having a bad attitude, lacking motivation, lacking effort, procrastinating, refusing to try, poise, poise, poor self-esteem, and passive behavior. Now, here's the thing about social media, man. In the Jenkins family. I would say something that may not sound like um, it's right. And I could be very well be wrong in what I'm saying or what I'm trying to get across, but just bear with me, please. The Jenkins family, right? Using their kids to make money. That's pretty much what it is. I, sometimes I, I don't agree with the children being on camera. Absolutely don't. Sometimes, though, it's hard to get on these people or be mad at these people for doing what we all do. I always find it weird that it's somebody who makes money off of social media talking about other people who make money off of social media because you don't agree with how they make money off of social media. But you're making money off of the way they make money off of social media. I make money talking about these people, right? I make a, I, I talk about people and stuff that I don't agree with. But I try to avoid the the way you make money is not right. You shouldn't be on here trying to get money from people on TikTok or whatever they make the fucking content on. I don't ever think it's right to exploit kids. I want to make that very clear. But do I think it's always so easy to just see it and so easy to be like, oh my God, I can't believe they're getting all this money and all these donations and all this shit. No, because that's what we all strive for. At the end of the day, we, we don't make videos. And most of us don't really just make videos just for the fun of it, for the hell of it. We want them views. We want that AdSense. We want the sponsorships. We want the brand deals. We can't, we don't just do this for any reason. I guarantee you, the vast majority of people, if YouTube quit making money, for any reason, YouTube said, hey, we're demonic this year, we're not paying no money out. You would see everybody go. Except for the big dogs who still love it, right? I'm not saying you have to do what you love for free. I'm absolutely not saying that. But I just think it's always weird that we want to get on to people for doing what we all do. Back to this list here. Avoiding decisions, giving up quickly, having a bad attitude, lacking motivation. First of all, we don't know these people. We're assuming that this family is has this learned helplessness. We don't fucking know them. At the end of the day, YouTube is a hustle, baby. I'm a hustler, baby! I gotta get that sound. Remind me to get that sound. But I'm a hustler, baby. At the end of the day, People are going to do what they got to do to get this bread. And you know what I'm saying? It's not, we always assume that people are just stupid or idiots. And I'm not saying that some people aren't oblivious to what's going on. But at the, but that doesn't mean that we assume that they're lacking this motivation. We're assuming that they're procrastinating, refusing to try. How can you refuse to try if all you, if all you're doing is trying to get money? That's all these people are doing. It's kind of hard to say they're refusing to try or lack motivation. If all they're doing is grinding on this TikTok or whatever that I forget, I don't know what they make videos on to get money. Even the TikTok beggars who I don't respect are hustlers. I don't know if it's lack of motivation and they do expect other people to help them, but that is exactly what YouTube is for a lot of us. 
We expect people to help us by watching our videos so we can get brand deals or sponsorships. Use our affiliate links and make money. I know I sound, maybe I sound silly to some of you guys, but it's just the truth. We all are expecting somebody to help us. Maybe that's even the case when you go to a nine to five. Of course, that's more different. I'm working for the company. It's not based off of, it's only based off my performance, really. I'm not expecting you to help me. I'm doing a job. I'm providing you with something you need to provide me with. YouTube is a completely different game. I have to kind of almost, I try to make the best content I can and get back to you guys the best I can. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I mean, am I really that different from a TikTok beggar? Am I? I'm not getting on here saying, hey guys, can you give me a galaxy? I'm not saying all that. But at the end of the day, I try to keep y'all's eyes on me. I ask for support. You see, my thing always says much love for the support. We're all kind of the same. We all, a lot of us want, maybe not a lot of us. I, I don't know. I don't know what percentage of people want to make money off of YouTube, but a lot of us want to quit our day jobs. And if not, we get burned out. We'll talk about that more in overtime. But I'm just being honest. Like, what makes me so different? What makes me so fucking different? I just feel disturbed when I know for a fact there are actual families out there who are truly struggling because they have a disabled parent or they only have one parent or they have disabled children. And even then, they're still trying their best. They're not making content off of it, exploiting their kids or exploiting kids that aren't even theirs for a profit and know that their situation requires more attention on their current kids rather than planning for five or six more. I swear family channels and vloggers and influencers get exposed like every month. They're there's a new family who has like dirty, dark, deep secrets who are presenting as these family friendly, like lovable, quirky people. And it's crazy to me that people fall for it still to this day, especially with the resilient Jenkins situation. The resilient Jenkins want to make money off of this and they even uploaded an Amazon registry where people can buy them stuff and people actually bought stuff. You can't believe people are still falling for it? Fall for what? What are we talking about? Fall for what? People want to help people. It's pretty simple. It doesn't matter. Listen, most of... I know a lot of people like to get on here and say that you're just a sheep. You're a bot. You're a follower. You're this. Newsflash, most of us are sheep, okay? Most of us follow something, and if you're following nothing, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. You got to be following something. So I would almost say it was better to be a sheep. I get I get the saying, meaning you need to be a lion. You need to always be leading. But how can you lead if you don't follow anybody? You got to have a leader yourself, unless you're assuming that you're the best leader. Right? So I know it's quick to be on here. You're a sheep. You're a follower. I can't believe y'all are giving these people money. End of the day, people want to help people, even if they don't give a fuck about this family. They'll probably do stuff for the children. You know what I'm saying? And as much as we want to hate on them profiting now, I'm saying like some of these fucking family channels, gross. I, like I said, I don't like kids being on camera at all. But I feel like sometimes, number one, if you're a person who gets on Facebook a lot, people put their kids on Facebook a lot. They show their reactions a lot. To be fair, we're pretty biased in what we just, what we talk about when it comes to the kids. I don't like seeing kids in any capacity, period. At all. I don't care if it's a Facebook post. I don't care if you're showing them um, do something stupid, like, like eat a pickle and make a pickle face or something. I don't know, something dumb. I don't like any of that. I always think it's very dangerous to put your kids online. They don't ask for that shit. They're not old enough to consent to that kind of stuff. So I don't like it at all, period. But I love it how we always pick and choose what's right and what's wrong. We're only judging the Jenkins family because we don't like the living conditions. But that's the whole, you don't know. That probably, that, that's probably part of the whole plan. I don't know. But if they know that people are going to react to the way they treat the family and you give them money or you shit on them, but it gets, still gets them views and brands and sponsorships, they're going to keep doing it. 
because you're spending all your time shitting on them. You know what I'm saying? Not helping the kids at all. The only person who really has the power is the, pro- the platform to say no kids. That's all it really comes down to. We should push for that. Instead of just shitting on these people, maybe push for no kids. And let's see where that goes. Um, I've always been a great advocate for no kids online. So I never show kids on my channel. I avoid it at all costs. Um, if I can, I don't, I'm sure I've shown kids, but I try to blur out their faces if I'm trying to show the adult that the kids happen to be in the shop. But who knows? But I'm just not surprised that people keep falling for this. People aren't idiots. I just think there's people who don't care. They're like, well, you know, I like them. I like the content. It's simple as that. Don't really care about anything else. I just want to help them because I like the content. So I'm just not shocked at it. Shocked at all by that. There is some stuff on the registry that was for the kids. But people also bought stuff like a ring light so that these people can continue making content, which is crazy to me. But people will still constantly defend this family, defend their choices, and blame literally anything but the parents for their own decisions. And honestly, I, I don't know why, especially after finding out everything that I have found out, against my will, by the way. How is it possible that through one viral video of this family, everyone knows your business everyone knows your business with two scrolls i found all of this within like three scrolls and that makes me really worried for the kids future because this oversharing will leak into the kids privacy once they can monetize it even more and once these kids are older they will be used to financially make up for what the parents lack at the expense of their privacy and mental health and that happens a lot but here's the thing your children owe you nothing. Your children owe you nothing. And that is something that a lot of parents don't want to hear because they want to hear like, oh, you're going to take care of me when I'm older, mija. You're going to do this. Like, like, no, don't touch me, ma'am. No. There is a reason why a lot of people are going no contact with their families. And that's all I got to say about that. And just watch, there is going to be a huge rise of these kids getting older and going no contact with their families because it's like, it's okay for us to struggle and for us to have been financially struggling, but what's not okay is the fact that you filmed it all and that you were trying to start drama online just to pay our bills. Like some stuff should be kept private unless you're trying to become better, unless you are seeking help, but it seems like these people aren't trying to get better and they're not trying to seek help. Y'all go watch the rest of that video. That's, uh, you saw the name down there. <clears throat> Let's make this point. I completely agree with that last part. These kids are going to hate these parents. Absolutely agree with that. Um, Because you're profiting off of them. You know what's crazy also? I do. I feel horrible for the kids because every time I see these mothers and fathers exploiting their children... And I get sometimes they're trying to be wholesome. Like, I completely understand. You're just trying to be wholesome, and money just happens to come with that sometimes. It really takes a lot. And I, that's why these videos are necessary. Because, like I said, I don't really care about the Jenkins. I don't care about them. I get it. But her her video now is serving a purpose when she mentioned this last part. She make, mentions, makes a lot more great points. But this part can help with the other people who aren't doing this stuff. Right? The people who are just putting their kids online and thinking it's cool or it's wholesome or this is what really matters to me. And the whole underlying problem with the Jenkins. These kids are just growing up trying to be as normal as they can. But when you keep putting them on the fucking camera, it fucks with them. Because Unless we're assuming that every family gets on here and waits till their kids are all having a great day at the same time. We see what happens to child stars. And now on YouTube, you can be just as big as a star. Imagine every time you see your face is showing on a screen when you get older, you'll realize that your parents got hundreds, 200, 300, millions of views on that. Bringing in all types of money. Every time your face was on camera. Every time you cried, every time you laughed, every time you smile, every time you did something stupid, your parents just, 
you could be thinking to yourself, well, what if the kids get part of the money? First of all, there is no thing for that because the, the child doesn't own the channel. And two, even if that's the case, it doesn't matter because the child normally doesn't get the consent. Because here's the dumb shit. You can't ask a kid to consent. No matter what you say, the kid can't consent. Till they're 18 years old, in my opinion. Or a legal adult in your state. Or country, whatever. They can't consent. So there's, there's nothing you can say. You can't go ask five-year-old Billy. Hey, Billy, do you do you want to you wanna be on camera? You want to be on camera for mommy and daddy? Huh? You want to be on camera for mommy and daddy? What's the kid going to say? No. And if the kid says yes, like, well, what situation with yes or no even make a, make a, what situation with yes or no even matter? You know, what is it? So I'm just sick of seeing the kids online. I'm sick of seeing it on everything. I'm sick of seeing kids everywhere. Um, I'm sure you guys have been seeing that stupid mom daughter thing. I never watched the videos, but you know, they pop up in your reels. It'll be like mom and daughter. I don't know what they're doing, but it's like mom, daughter. And I thought that's enough for me not to watch. But I see that trend going around so much and it's just like goofy as hell. And man, the creativity is so low, but I just, if kids, I'm trying to explain myself here. If kids, when they become adults, want to put themselves all online, let them do so. But until then, keep them offline so much. All of y'all are so proud of y'all's kids, and I get that shit sometimes. And I'm going to go into a little bit of another sector here. For you people who are so proud of your kids, they made the little league team or whatever, I get it. But you guys make your shit public, because I see people get more into reels and stories and shit like that. Y'all make yourself public where anybody can come find your kids and see them. And just because you're so proud of them, like, get out of your fucking head. Do that shit in your local community. But not online or in public where anybody can come see them. Like, if it's that serious, you know, private your page to where only maybe a couple, maybe a couple family members can see them. But 635 friends, you ain't got that many fucking friends that you still speak to personally? Come on, baby. So when you're a, when you're proud of your kids for making the Little League team, or like I said, or you're proud of your kids because they went to state or they won some competition, I get it. You're a proud parent. Keep the shit to yourself and the people that are as close as they can be to you. Because at the end of the day, it's your fucking ego. It's your ego that's getting in the way. It's your ego and you feel like, like you're so proud that you want to show them off. Let's be real about this shit. Because if it was just about the kid, let them make that decision when they get older then. Keep it private. And if they feel proud of their accomplishments, let them brag to their little friends. But you don't have to do anything. You're a grown-ass adult. Their accomplishments aren't really yours. And here's another thing. Um, one thing that this young lady mentioned. The whole no contact and all that kind of stuff. And I've already touched on this. Your success. I mean, their success has really not much to do with you. If you were a great parent, I get all that. But they don't owe you shit. You did your job. You paid for sports and all that, but you did your job. Too many of the parents, they get out here, and I worked in this setting. I worked with kids for 20 years. Too many of these parents feel like their kids owe them the whole world. Just because they were born. I raised you, so, yeah, you better you better get back to me. Yeah, you better make me proud. Yeah, you better make A's. Yeah, you better do this. Yeah, you better do that, because I... I'm like, whoa, I understand being part of the family, but as long as they're not embarrassing the family, what the hell else do they owe you? You know what I'm saying? Like, I can get it if your kid grows up to be an adult and they kind of embarrass the family a little bit, but they're an adult. But I don't get the whole, I owe you anything. I don't owe you a got. Let me slow down. I don't owe you nothing. You know what I mean? That's how these kids feel. I don't owe you anything. My parents never made my parents have never made me feel like I owe them anything. My parents don't go, hey, they don't call me up and say, Yeah, you owe me your life or you owe me this. You owe me. My parents have always been very giving. As I've been in in my adult years, if I ask my mom for something, 
Like, she'll just give it. If I need something, she'll give it. I don't ask much, but if I knew it, if I absolutely needed it, I'm like, Mom, I need a couch. Mom, I need, uh, uh, damn it, I need some, I need some food. We broke. My mom would figure out a way to do that. But she don't come in my face and say, well, you owe me. Don't forget, I did raise you. You just did your job. Now, I know this probably sounds like a disrespectful thing. Maybe I sound like a Gen Zer. Um, but I do think that's something the young generation got right. I'm glad we called that out, that we don't owe our parents anything. We owe them respect, and that's it, in my opinion. But we don't owe them anything. Our success isn't theirs. If I go on to be a famous football player, I don't owe you any money. I don't owe you anything. You were there for me. I love that for you. Thank you. But I don't owe you for you doing your job. Just because I was super talented doesn't mean it's because of you I was talented. I know this sounds harsh, especially people who come from single single mothers or maybe a single father. And they feel like they owe everything back to them because they raise them. I think we, this is what it's about to be. Be harsh. But for the single parents out there, good job. That's all you get. Good job. You, you didn't you didn't fuck it up the worst as bad as you could have. Good job. I'm not saying it's not hard to be a single parent. I'm not saying it's not hard to be a parent, period. But when I don't think you should get an extra lift up because you were a single mother. I don't care. Circumstances do happen. Sometimes the man leaves, or sometimes you made him leave. And the same thing, single father. Sometimes the mother leaves. Sometimes you made them leave, and sometimes they pass away. Something tragic happens. Life goes on. It didn't work out. You didn't. Y'all didn't stay together for some reason. They left. Okay, whatever happened happened. But you don't get to put yourself up here and be like, "Well, I was a single mother, so they should." No, that's your fucking life. That's nothing to do with them. Nothing to do. They didn't choose. They didn't say, "Man, if I got the option, hmm, both my parents in a loving marriage or a single mom." Well, you know what? Single mom it is. No, these kids don't pick that. They're just born in that circumstance. So you don't get no extra cookies for that. You shouldn't ask your kids to be like, yeah, my mom is a single mother. And she just, no, you don't need to do all that shit. If they choose to do that, that's on them. But don't push them into that. Anyway, I'm not talking about this, but the Jenkins, they're going to keep doing what TikTok does best. Big. Uh, but I'm not surprised. People are always going to help people for the most part. And we do live in a society today where if you are extreme or dramatic, that's what makes you the most money. Not saying you have to be that way, but let's just be honest. On TikTok, you got to be at least extraordinary. You can't just be another person. Nobody wants to give money to somebody who just sweeps up the house. They want something new. So if you don't want them to make money, talk about people being less in the drama. Fuck the Jenkins. Start teaching people not to be into the dramatic shit. But at the end of the day, that shit sells. Goodbye.